Hi everyone and welcome back to another video of Architects 3D Printing. This is the fourth episode of the Cura Custom Settings series. In the previous episodes, we analyzed the quality, shell and infill tabs in the Cura Custom Settings menu. In case you missed those videos, I strongly recommend you to watch them clicking right here or well in the link in the description. In this episode, we are going to analyze the fourth tab, that will be the material menu. To experiment with the settings, one more time, we are going to use our test cube that we created in the first episode. So we will experiment all the changes in this little object that will result in fast prints. And later we will also use a couple more 3D models to test the temperature and the retraction of our 3D printer. We will upload all the objects to a post in our Patreon's page and you will find the link to download all of them down in the description of the video. Ok, so to start, as always, I am going to import in Cura our test cube and change the view mode from solid to layer view. Since the material changes will not visually affect that much our 3D model in the visual analyzer, later we will make different prints changing some of the adjustments in the material custom settings section. In this episode, I'm going to change a little bit the order of the steps and first I'm going to explain what options we are going to show and why. So before anything, we are going to start clicking in the setup wheel, which will launch us to the settings visibility menu. Here we are going to activate all the different settings that will be relatively useful to get nice results in our 3D prints. Especially in this material tab, we may change some of the adjustments depending on the material we are going to use. A set of adjustments that we make for PLA will possibly work with almost all our PLA filaments, but we will have to change them to print with ABS or for example with flexible filaments. Also, you might change some of the adjustments depending on the month of the year you are, since for example during winter you may need higher printing temperatures than during the summer. Alright, so once it's clear, we are going to start analyzing all the different options in the settings visibility menu and activating the ones that will be useful for our 3D prints. The first option is default printing temperature. It basically does what the name says, and we are going to hide it because it will be overwritten by the next adjustments, and this one will not take any effect. Next we have printing temperature, maybe the most important adjustment of this tab, that of course we will activate. After it, we will find the printing temperature of the initial layer. It is also quite important, since using a quite higher value here than in the normal printing temperature will provide us much better adhesion to the heated bed, so we'll reduce the number of failed prints. The next two adjustments we find are initial printing temperature and final printing temperature. I don't like to use these adjustments because I don't find them useful at all. It will have an influence in the timings of the start and the end of the prints. Let's analyze the steps our printer takes to start and finish a print. When we start a print, as you can see here, the steps the printer follows are the next. First, it heats the bed, what normally will have a lower temperature than the nozzle, until it reaches the target temperature that in our case is 70 degrees Celsius. Once it's done, the information in the LCD screen changes and now it says nozzle heating. So it will heat up one more time until it reaches the target temperature, that will be the printing temperature of the initial layer, and in our case is set to 210 degrees Celsius. Once the bed and the hot end are in the optimal temperatures, the printer will move the X and Y axis until the nozzle gets to the position 00. zero. Then it moves the extruder down in the Z axis until the coordinates of the home of the printer are 000. zero, zero. It's then when the printer will put the nozzle in the X direction and start the print, being the bed and hot and temperature 70 and 210 degrees Celsius, as we said in CUDA. Ok, so once it's explained, you will understand these values. The first one, the initial printing temperature, will change when the printer can go directly to the step 3, having reached the temperature that we set in this value instead of the 210 degrees we set before, and will start the print. I think it makes no sense, and that's why I don't like to use it. And the same happens with the next adjustment, but this time at the end of the print. 
what it will basically do is to stop heating the nozzle for example at 99% of the print so the printing temperature will start to drop down from 200 celsius while the printer is still extruding material in theory it will reduce the energy consumption but it is nothing compared to the risks we are taking by extruding material at a temperature that is lower than the optimal for the material ok so for now we will only activate the two options printing temperature and printing temperature of the initial layer the next option we will find will be the extrusion cooldown speed modifier another value that I will not recommend to show because it is not that useful and next we will find another very important option that is the build plate temperature this value is extremely necessary to print with materials with retraction such as ABS and it is optional with other materials such as PLA I mostly print all the stuff in PLA since it does not produce any gases or smells and it is a renewable material there is a possibility to use PLA with the heated bed completely disabled something that I used to do until I discovered the method that I'm using right now when you have set the printer build plate to 0 degrees it will use no energy and as the PLA has almost zero retraction your prints will look nice the only problem here is that you will need something for the build plate adhesion when I used to print with the heated bed activated, I used hairspray, glue sticks and other methods for the bed adhesion and it worked it worked almost always perfectly the only bad thing is that for example when you use hairspray you will create a toxic atmosphere in the room you have the printer that it will sometimes be even hard to breathe in also if you use glue sticks you eliminate the problem of the smell but you will have to clean the heated bed in almost every print and then apply the glue stick again also some of the glue will stick to the actual print producing very dirty bottom layers in the final pieces so what am i using to stick my prints to the heated bed well, so as most of you may not expect, I use nothing, absolutely nothing. But it is very important that you wash your heated bed glass with some soap and after cleaning it, never ever touch it with your hands, since if you do, your prints will not stick anymore. And once it's clean and installed, what I used to do is to set the build plate temperature to 70 degrees Celsius. One more time, we can set the build plate temperature of the initial layer to improve the adhesion. But in my case, it has not been necessary because at 70 degrees Celsius it sticks perfectly. Anyways, you could set it to 80 or 90 if you want. The next option we find is diameter, another must setting. Here we will introduce the diameter of the filament that we are using. We only use 1.75 mm filament, but another very common material will be 3 mm. You just have to set it depending on your case. Next, we find adhesion tendency and surface energy. A couple settings that are not compatible with our 3D printer, so we are not going to activate them. Next, we'll find flow, an option that we talked about in the first episode. And what basically do is to overwrite the amount of material that will be extruded through the nozzle. I'm going to activate it and later I'll talk about my numbers. Next, we have a set of options that we are going to activate. They will be enable retraction, retract to layer change, retraction distance and retraction speed. They are very important to get good results out of your prints. Enable retraction will add the possibility to enable or not this function. The retraction works where the printer finishes an extrusion in one spot of the object and it moves to other spot to continue printing. If we don't have it activated, we will have our prints full of kind of hairs of PLA everywhere. Retract at layer change will do the same, but instead of from one point to other in the same layer, this time it will retract when the printer goes up to the next layer. Then retraction distance and speed will control, as the name says, the distance of the filament that will be retracted and also the speed of the stepper motor of the extruder. The retraction speed has two suboptions to control separately the speed of the retraction and the speed of the prime. In my case, I have not had any problems using only the same speed in both, so that's why I'm not going to activate them, but you can do it if you want. Next, we will find retraction extra prime amount, and it is useful with some filaments, but you won't need to use it 
when you print in PLA, so we are not going to activate it. Then we will find Retraction Minimum Travel. This option is very useful because it controls the minimum distance where the retraction will be activated. A lot of times, retractions are produced for just changes on the layer that are right next to the position where the extruder is in this moment. Enable this option with a small value will reduce considerably the printing times of your prints. We'll analyze it deeply later, and now we are going to follow with the available options. Next, we will find maximum retraction count and minimum extrusion distance window. That will basically limit the number of retractions to prevent the flattening of the filament, causing problems in the print. We are not going to use it, since if we limit the number of retractions with the retraction minimum travel option, we won't have a very big amount of retractions in the same portion of filament. The next option are standby temperature, nozzle switch retraction distance and nozzle switch retraction speed. Those options are meant for printers with more than one extruder, so they won't be useful in our case and in most of the cases, so we are simply going to skip them. Ok, so once we have shown all the necessary options in the Cura Custom Settings menu, we are going to set the values that will work the best. One more time, you might have to change some of the options depending on the filament you are using and also the characteristics of the 3D model you are going to print. To configure our printer, I'm going to use a brand new filament that we bought recently and we have never used, so we don't know how will it work. If we look at the tag from the manufacturer in the side of the spool, we'll see that it says that the material is PLA and the diameter is 1.75 mm. So that's the first value we are going to introduce. Next, we will find the color and then the temperature. These values are always orientative, but it says that the temperature of the nozzle should be between 190 and 210 degrees Celsius. So for the printing temperature, we are going to use 200 degrees Celsius and 210 degrees Celsius for the printing temperature of the initial layer. Next, we find the recommendation for the temperature of the base plate and should be in between 30 and 50 Celsius according to the manufacturer. In our case, we are going to use 70 degrees Celsius since we found that this is the best value for every material and it is giving us a nice addition to the heated bed in all materials we have tested and without using any hairspray or glue stick. So the next is flow, that we are going to set to 95 instead of 100%. It may vary in every printer, so you can make different prints changing it to see where do you get the best result. We are going to enable the retractions and the retraction at layer change and we are going to set the retraction distance of 0.8 mm because we have made a lot of tests and it simply works fine. For the retraction speed, we'll set 35 mm per second. And finally, for the retraction minimum travel, we will set 0.8 mm since it is two times the nozzle and we won't really notice if we have retractions or not in this little distance. Ok, so once we have all the values set, we are going to print the test cube and check how it turns out on the printer. So the quality as you can see is great, but this is not a 3D model where the settings from the material tab make a good difference. Now I'm going to print a couple objects that will really challenge the use of the material settings tab and they are the temperature tower and the retraction performance test. The first will be the temperature tower, in which we are going to modify the G-code to print with a different temperature every 10 mm and then we will print the retraction performance test what will test our retraction settings with some influence of the temperature too. Ok, so let's import the temperature tower and we are going to set the printing temperature of the initial layer to 190 degrees and we are also going to set the printing temperature to 190 degrees Celsius. We are going to generate the G-code and we will open it with any text editor. Now we are going to find where the temperature has been defined. So we'll press Ctrl F if you are in Windows or Command F if you are in Mac and we are going to write S190. Ok, so there is where the temperature has been set and as you can see, the command for the temperature of the nozzle is M104 S190. 
So we are going to copy this line and we are going to find where is the height 10 millimeters. Since we are using a 0.2 millimeter layer height, if we divide 10 millimeters in between 0.2, the result is 50. So more or less, the layer at 10 millimeters will be the layer number 50. Now we are going back to the text editor and we are going to find this time using command F, layer 50. And right under this value, we are going to paste the line we copied before. And now we will write 191 instead of 190, being the command M104 S 191. We are going to repeat this process 5 more times in the layer 100, 150, 200, 250 and 300. And now we will have 6 portions with difference of 1 degree Celsius. We are going to modify the g-code a couple more times since we only reached 196 degrees. Now we will copy and paste the g-code from before and we will find 190 and change it to 197. Then we will find 191 and we will change it by 198, etc. So in this file we will test until 203 degrees. Ok, so now we are going to compare the quality of the prints and we will choose the one we think has the best finish. In our case we are going to use 190 degrees Celsius and we are going to make the other test for the retractions. For this one we are going to slice it as we normally do with the settings we tested before and we are going to see the result that we get. If it is not good, we will repeat this process changing the retraction distance and speed until we get a good result out of the printer. It is important that you activate the cooling at 100% if you have it in your 3D printer down in the cooling section of the menu. As you can see, we got a pretty good result with these settings, so you can just copy my settings and make some changes from this point if you need to optimize them from your 3D printer to get a good result. Ok, so at this point we have finished analyzing the materials tab in Cura Custom Settings menu. You can find the files that I used on Thingiverse, but I am going to upload all of them in a post in our Patreons page, including the SDL and 3DM of the test cube the retractions test and the temperature tower. By the way, I will also upload the three customized G-codes with the temperature from 190 to 196, 197 to 202 and 203 to 209 degrees so you can just use them without having to modify anything. As always, I will put the links down in the description of the video. Now, what I would recommend you is to start playing with the settings we analyzed today with your 3D printer. And if you enjoyed and learned with the video, please hit the like button, share the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel, clicking here in this little icon that you will find in the bottom right corner. To stay tuned for future videos, you can also follow us on Twitter or Instagram at architects3dp. If you want to support the channel, you can also consider to support us on Patreon from only $1 per month, what will make us extremely happy and also will give you some nice rewards that you can check in our Patreon page navigating to patreon.com slash architects3dp or clicking in the link in the description. Ok, so as always, see you guys in the next video.